Let's move now to these pro-Palestine protests that are to occur today and tomorrow. You've said you're unhappy these events are going ahead. Yeah, I think particularly on the anniversary, the 7th of October tomorrow, I, my view is that it lacks compassion to hold a rally or a demonstration or a protest on that day. Um, now, the New South Wales Police have obviously not allowed or granted a permission uh, for a protest to take place in Sydney's CBD. The reason for that isn't to restrict freedom of speech or put prohibitions on what people can say in public. It's because we've got an obligation to keep the public safe in a difficult time. And when tensions are high, there's a high prospect of clashes or violence on Sydney's streets. We have to take uh, what would ordinarily be actions that you wouldn't contemplate. But under the circumstances, I think most people would agree that we're not going to do much about Middle East and violence from Sydney. And we have to do everything we possibly can to prevent that kind of violence in Sydney. How strong do you want police to be in the next couple of days, though, in, in targeting things like people having Hezbollah flags and the like? What's the police intelligence on, on risks in the next couple of days? Yeah, look, I've been very clear about not, um, uh, not uh, hypothecating potential... Uh, clashes or breaches of the law, other than to say that police have got tactics as well as resources and the law behind them to ensure that the public is safe, that there's not an incitement to hatred or violence in New South Wales, and to send a very clear message that that's illegal in the state, uh, to use banned terrorist symbols to incite violence, to promote racism, particularly anti-Semitism, uh, which is, uh, in my view, becoming more permissive and uh, more prevalent in our community, uh, they'll take action. Now, that'll take place. We've made that very clear. We've communicated that to anybody that's uh, uh, having a protest or plans to hold a protest over the coming 24 hours, um, and police will take action. Are you concerned about the group his at Tahrir being involved in, in some of these activities? Yes, we are. But I'll make it clear that the laws in New South Wales, whether they're Commonwealth or New South Wales laws, will be enforced. And we have restrictive laws in the state. It's not the same laws that they have in the United States around freedom of speech. And they're designed specifically to ensure that we don't have widespread social dislocation location in a state and a country that has people from a whole range of races and religions. I've been particularly concerned in some of these marches with people that have had blatant anti-Semitic propaganda uh, walking down the street with virtual impunity. And I think that there's a, a prevalence or a sense among some in the community that racism directed towards members of the Jewish community is acceptable. It's not. It's covered by the law and you'll be prosecuted and arrested as so a result. You want police to target that a bit more actively by the sound of things, saying that people have been doing that with impunity? Police have been arresting people for those acts of breaches of the New South Wales anti-hate laws or federal government anti-hate laws, but we've got to be vigilant about it. And it's not acceptable any, under any circumstances. It wouldn't be acceptable if it applied to any other race or religion in the state. And it can't be the case that in New South Wales there's a carve out for members of our Jewish community. What's your advice from or, police? Or, or attacks, or sorry, or attacks, I should say, attacks or a, um, a deliberate attempt to target members of our Jewish community. There might be a police chopper above you now by the sound of things. <laughs> what, what's your advice... No, no just a local, just local a lo helicopter. Just a local helicopter. There you go. What's your advice from police on the risk of terrorism in New South Wales currently? Well, unfortunately, the, uh, the, the national rating in relation to terrorism is probable, which means greater than 50% over the coming 12-month period. Now, that's a concern for governments, not just in New South Wales, but around Australia. That means that resources are in place. Obviously, the government works with the federal government and intelligence services about um, plans that are in place. But, you know, you have to be vigilant about this. I don't want to... I don't want to be in a position, a position where we're alarming or alerting people, but we do need to be cognizant of the threats and make sure that police have the resources they need to be ready. And they are ready. We've had Josh Frydenberg, the former federal treasurer, come out in the Australian yesterday and say the federal government hasn't done enough for Jewish people in the wake of the October 7 attacks. He's criticised the foreign minister, Penny Wong, 
for calling for restraint in the hours after the October 7 attacks. What's your view on, on what Josh Frydenberg's had to say? Oh, look, to be honest, Andrew, I haven't read his, uh, his piece, but um, I'll just say that it's clear that the New South Wales government and the Commonwealth government need to stand with uh, the Jewish community across Australia, particularly on the 7th of October. As has been reported on the show, uh, this is the greatest loss of life for Jewish people since the Holocaust. It's a horrific event. There needs to be a clear line in the sand that suggests, says unambiguously that this is wrong. It's not justifiable. And when you're ma massacring innocent people, uh, it's, it can never be tolerated or acceptable under any circumstances. I have to say that my interactions with the Commonwealth Government, in particular the Prime Minister, have always been in the service of that message. And I think he's as clear today as he was in the hours after that horrifying event. You were in charge uh, of the state when that now infamous event happened at the Sydney Opera House where people were chanting, where's the Jews and, and other horrible slogans. Do you have any regrets now uh, a year on around that? And if a similar event occurred now, would you like to see more arrests? Would you like to see a, a, that clamped down upon? Yeah, I apologised at the time. Uh, it was a it was a mistake. I have to take I have to take a lesson from that, and I bear responsibility for it. Uh, we can't allow that to happen again, and that's part of the reason why police were so vigilant about planned protest activity this Sunday and Monday. It wasn't to restrict freedom of speech, but Andrew, we can't have a situation where hundreds of people hijack a march, end up down at the Opera House and in a violent confrontation with police spew hatred and racism in the public, those images were spread on the front pages of newspapers around the world and it gave Sydney and Australia a terrible reputation during that period. I'm determined to make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, part of that is ensuring that we're vigilant about these protests. New South Wales police are ready. I should also say, it's, I've said this this week and I believe it to be the case, most people that are attending the Palestinian rallies are not supporters of terrorist organisations and are not going there to whip up hysteria or hatred on our streets. They've got concerns about Palestinian rights or they're concerned about the loss of life uh, as a result of the military conflict. But we can't let it tumble into... Uh, clashes or confrontations on Sydney streets. I think that's something that most people, 99% of Australians that live in New South Wales, regardless of your background, agree with, and the New South Wales government's primary responsibility. Let, let me ask now about this scandal involving your police commissioner, Karen Webb. Does the commissioner retain your full confidence? What do you think of a situation where the commissioner is buying 50 bottles of gin and distributing some as presents? Is that an appropriate use of taxpayer money in your view? Well, she does, absolutely. And as you'd appreciate, this weekend is an example of the work that the police commissioner, the New South Wales Police and the government have to do. I mean, our primary responsibility is to keep the public safe, to ensure there's order in the streets in the state and that happens every single day. I've been impressed with her professionalism in rolling out uh, police resources and communications in a complex situation like we've had this weekend and the police have been strong but very clear about the protest activity and they've made that clear to those both the organisers and general members of the public. Look in relation to those gifts the police commissioner herself has said that she wouldn't do it again. The practice has been discontinued. I think we've all learned as a result of that. But if you're asking, do I have confidence in the police commissioner, the, the work that she does, the complex work that she does in Australia's biggest state is difficult. Uh, it's not easy work. I think she does it with a professional team around her. And I know there's going to be criticism of things like gifts of uh, gin, for example, but on the things that we pay the police commissioner to do, the major responsibilities is she does an exemplary job. So the 2GB host, Ben Fordham, he's pretty high profile in Sydney, he, called, he said she should resign. It's a, it's a big call. What do you think of that call? I mean, have you discussed this matter with the Commissioner as well? Uh, not, not about resigning and I don't, I don't want her to resign. I want her to get on with the job. Uh, right now, she's focusing on marshalling police resources at a difficult time. Uh, on the streets in Sydney and I think most taxpayers in the state would expect her to do that, turn up for the job, uh, ensure that we've got resources in place, be clear with the public about what the stakes are and ensure that when people break the law they're arrested and that is happening in New South Wales. Have you, so have, uh, Premier, have you discussed, do that did you, have you ever discussed the gifts of Jim with her? Have you ever sort of said to her, look, this isn't a great idea? 
I think, oh, look, scanning my memory, we did have a conversation about it. She said to me she's going to discontinue the practice. I mean, this is in the midst of hundreds of conversations, the majority of which are about, you know, funnily enough, law enforcement. All right, Premier, just finally, what's your tip for the NRL Grand Final tonight? Oh, it's going to be a close one. Um, the out-of-towners might just get there by a uh, golden point field goal. Oh, wow. The New South Wales Premier says Melbourne will win it. What about that? That's the biggest story of the interview. Chris Mintz, thank you. Thanks, Andrew.